Kia ora everyone. Kia ora. Kia ora. How's everyone doing? Good, thanks. Thanks everyone for joining us. How are we all doing on this lovely Thursday night? So far, so good. Thank you. Good to hear. Um, I'm just going to wait until we've got everyone here. It looks like we're just waiting on a couple more people. Um, so for those of you who I've not actually saying, I've not met any of you. I've just spoken to you over Facebook Messenger. I'm Luke. I'm doing project support for Neighbors Day Aotearoa and really excited to be helping you guys make this stuff happen. And so obviously this is the first in a series of a couple of Zooms um, to just have a little bit of a shared korero and um, a just a bit of an ideas jam and help you guys turn all of those incredible ideas you've got in your heads into an actual reality for Neighbours Day. Um, I'm just couple of people joining. I'm just going to wait to start the formalities until we've got everyone in. So anyone who doesn't have their video on or is not unmuted, you can go ahead and flick your video on and unmute yourselves. This is very much a shared experience where we're going to be bouncing ideas off one another. Um, so I'm Luke. I'm working, obviously, doing the project support. I've um, worked with Sissy on a number of projects in the past and i um, really excited to be working on this one, but it's not actually about me. Um, we're going to be talking about all of your... Hello there. All of yeah, your hello. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. No, you're absolutely fine. It's only 7.32. We're all getting ourselves together um, and just helping you guys make something happen for Neighbours Day. I've also got the wonderful Kyle here from Community Think, who works closely with Sissy, who's going to be talking through some of the resources available um, through Community Think to help you guys make your uh, make your ideas into a reality. So the whole idea of this first session is um, ideas to action, turning all of your fabulous ideas, of which I know you've got so many, and I've seen a lot of incredible kōrero in the um, in the chat, um, and how to take it, an idea and turn it into something, an event basically. And I know that a big question for a number of people is what is an event, what constitutes an event and what doesn't constitute an event. And I've got to say that all of the ideas that I've heard from all of you thus far definitely qualify as an event. And if anything, the last 12 months has taught us that we can do an event in any way we want, in any way we deem possible, and we can make things happen even if it's just over Zoom. Obviously, we're hoping that we can have some actual community integration and um, community uh, activity. Um, but, you know, even if um, your ideas happen online on a small scale, it doesn't need to be a big grand to do. It's about making connections. So. That's enough from me. Um, I'd just like to maybe, could we um, go around, uh, you know, uh, Zoom by Zoom, screen by screen, and um, just have a little introduction of what your name is, uh, maybe a little bit about yourself and what part of the country you're Zooming in from. So shall we start with Phoebe? Hello, yeah, Phoebe. Yeah, Hi, everybody. Um, so I am here I guess um, under the umbrella of the Forest Hill Community Garden, we are three and a half years into the process of getting this thing off the ground. And we're about a month away of getting final license to occupy from Auckland Council. So it's been a labor of love um, hanging in there, getting to this point, but we're super, super close. So this is really, really timely. Um, one of the volunteers on the database um, indicated um, or sent me a link to Neighbours Day actually and I thought oh that's so rad we need to connect up with that and so the timing's really cool and we've thought um, of hosting a houseplant swap as a um, something to kind of get, get things going before we get that final sign off from council so 
that's what we're here. Um, that's what I'm learning about tonight, how, how to get that up and going. I love it. All right, let's flip to Jess next. So I'm in um, I have two hats. I am um, a community connector for a charitable trust here in Medford called Wellbeing Opera. Um, and I'm also a project coordinator for another charitable trust um, in Ashburton, which is Trots Community Gardens. Um, and at Trots, we are planning to have uh, a community day um, on the, I think it's Sunday, the 27th. I can't remember, I think it's the 27th. Um, and as well as lots of sort of um, gardening things we're gonna have from hosting like workshops on like gardening tips and um, you know, how to grow seedlings and things like that. And we were thinking of perhaps having a, a stall there for people to do a kind of plant swap. Guys, yeah, we're, we're very much in the beginning stages of this. And um, in Methven, as part of Wellbeing Opera Day, um, I was thinking of maybe just setting up a, to make some shelves somewhere in the community um, where people could just bring along produce or plants or, yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I was really keen to hear what everyone else is doing to sort of like get my creative juices flowing. <laughs> totally. That's fabulous. And what about you, Kat? Oh, kia ora, everyone. It's a late arrival of the cats. Sorry, guys. Um, my role with Neighbours Day Aotearoa is as a navigator in the good old Hawke's Bay. So my, my role is to encourage other people to get on board with Neighbours Day. So um, it's not so much myself personally planning events. It's encouraging and coming up with ideas. So that's why I want to steal all your ideas so I can pass them around to everyone else. Um, yeah, yeah. So some of the things that we've seen is um, an early childhood centre uh, planting. I've managed to be given some of those. Um, my plants, the little New World ones, we're giving them out. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some of those. So we've engaged with an early childhood centre to get the kids to plant them. And then they're going to take them home and give them to their neighbours. Um, the other, the bigger ones that we're doing is hopefully the library notes for neighbours. So to set up an area in the library for notes for neighbours. So people can come in and they can be encouraged to write something on a note about their neighbour, what they like about them hopefully in a positive way only, <laughs> put it on the, the um, wall of fame and then other people can walk past and go, hey, that's pretty cool. Maybe I could be encouraged to be a better neighbour. I could do that. So um, that's another one that we're sort of looking at doing. Um, but yeah, so lots of cool, fun activities happening, lots of giving, which is really cool. Um, food grown, produced, turned into pots of jam and relish. And um, I think we shared on the page there was the, um, it's blackberry season now, so you know, we can go out and forage the blackberries and come home and make jam and give that away. Um, I'm quite happy with stuff personally with um, on my, my new discovery is mint. I'm not really a gardener, I have to be honest here, um, but I have discovered mint. You can grow mint in a pot and all you need to do is pick the leaves off the mint and put it in a teapot and pour hot water just off the boil over the top and you have got the best peppermint tea ever. So I'm quite keen on that. So that's my kind of deal that I'm going to but yeah so pretty excited really excited I think it's cool I love to see good neighbours community girl here fabulous we love to hear that thank you so much Kath and what about um you um Tongani and I'm really sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly no that's cool that's uh you can just call me Nani I was like I, thinking I, I, I don't well I will yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm just doing a pickup at the moment, so I'm sitting in the car park. Um, <laughs> and I, I um, yeah, I've got my happen. alert. And I, thought, <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I'm here to get ideas. Um, I'm in Papakura. Uh, I ran a neighbour's day in our street a couple of years ago because we had lots of new neighbours. For one, for some reason, there's one side of our street that keeps um, people just keep moving in and out of. 
Yeah, and um, we had been talking about having another one, then COVID hit, and yeah. So now is another opportunity. Would you believe it? We've got new neighbours again. <laughs> I love so that. So it's about trying to bring everyone together because the last one we had, it was really good, and you know everyone got to know each other. And instead of just walking past each other and nodding at each other, we were you know now starting to have conversations, and we'd like to bring our new neighbours into that as well. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. That's fabulous. And what about you, Monica? You might need to unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm also from Auckland, Tamaki Makoto. I um, actually work for council. I'm in a role called a strategic broker. So each of the 21 local boards um, have a strategic broker. So I'm in the Upper Harbour local board area. So that kind of runs from Parimarimo, Albany, across the Upper Harbour Bridge into Greenhithe and all the way out to Whanuapai. Um, so it's quite a diverse area and um, because we're on that rural urban kind of boundary I suppose I'm um, seeing a lot of new communities because there's just a lot more development happening so areas that were previously um, really rural probably orchards and things <laughs> um, you know we're, we're sitting seeing like suburbia <laughs> coming in overnight what looks like overnight um, and so, yeah, we've got a lot of people who may not have got a history of living in the area that they're living in now, but they've literally moved in because they're either renting or bought a brand new property. Um, and so Auckland Council's got this role to support communities to help, you know, connect people and be more resilient. Um, but not all local boards fund Neighbours Day. Um, so some local boards do. Um, ours doesn't have like a separate Neighbours Day kind of um, program, if you like. So as a broker, I'm very interested in sort of informal ways that I can support communities to um, be involved in Neighbours Day. So I'm kind of doing this, you know, sort of unofficially. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> come in Love and that. just have a bit of a listen and also with you know just having come out of lockdown into level two I'm kind of going people are nervous you know about doing sort of face-to-face -face stuff straight after and you know um so if there's creative ways that we can do that that's that feels safe um or even if it's online or distanced in some way um I'd be keen to see how I could pick up some ideas um, and learnings tonight so that's why I'm here, and thank you. Abula. And Jade, would you like to jump in if you're able and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I am, my name's Jade, hi everyone. I work for Queenstown Lakes District Council. Um, I am a community recovery coordinator, which is a new role for post COVID. Um, so my aim is to try and bring the community together, bring some community resilience back into the community, uh, get people knowing the neighbours and just generally promoting health and well-being um, and trying to help people find work again and doing job spheres and so on. Um, so at the moment I'm currently running some community events and I just wanted to jump on and see if we could get, you know, if I could find some creative nuts from you guys with what sort of competitions you might be running or what sort of online competitions I can run just for the district wide and yeah just try and get some ideas from everyone here. Fabulous um, and I'm going to hand over to Kyle now just to introduce himself um, and his role in Neighbours Day. Hi everyone, I'm Kyle. Currently my role within Neighbours Day is as other, one of the project leads. It changes every two weeks. I'll have a different title in another two weeks, it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> currently we're working hard on making sure that all of the events that have been added to, that have registered with us are being put onto the website and those that are interested um, are going onto the Facebook account so that'll be done in the next one or two weeks. Um, we've also got some great resources that I don't know if Luke wants to show you now, but I can probably show you later. Um, I, this is my first year with Neighbours Day, but I do have experience uh, leading events such like this. I've, I've 
been on the team that produces pride for the last two years in Auckland City. So, oh yeah, and I'm calling in from lovely Auckland Central. Kia ora. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Kyle. And I should um, clarify that the reason that I know Kyle is not just from my work with Community Think, but last year and the year prior, I worked very closely with Kyle and Sissy and the team at Auckland Pride in my role as vegetable producer. So I'm coming to you with an expertise in making things happen from the smallest scale online event to big scale things that require tickets and all kinds of things. But I've got to say that I'm really, really enthused by not just all of your passion for community building, but all of your incredible ideas. And it's like I've said in the past and said in some of my messages, um, you guys have all got what you need to make events happen, but I'm here to help support you to dot the I's and cross the T's, make sure you tick off the, the things on this, you know, that tick off the items on the list and the, some slightly more boring things or more logistical things, I should probably say, about putting on an event, but it sounds like all it's, everyone in attendance has a wealth of experience and more importantly, you've got incredible ideas and a passion for connecting your communities. So that's really, really exciting. So this first workshop today is basically a little bit of idea jamming. We can ha we're going to have a little bit of conversation about um, how to turn your ideas into realities. And um, I most importantly, welcome all of your questions because I'm, I'm very much an open book. Um, if you don't have my email address already, if you don't have my number already, I'll make sure you've got it after this. But I'm here to cool. help answer your questions and turn your ideas into a reality. Very shortly, um, I'm going to hand over to Kyle, who is going to showcase some of the incredible resources that Neighbours Day has available. But just before I hand over, does anybody have any immediate burning questions or things they'd like to flag before we get into some slightly more logistical elements of what Neighbours Day can offer? Anyone got anything they need to add? Any queries, comments, concerns? I love that. I love. I love that. There's no questions here, but I, I. You're all probably just like me, is that the questions will come in immediately after we close the Zoom, and <laughs> I'm going to make sure that you've all got my contact information because I'm here and I'm available to help support all of your ideas. So right now, I'm going to hand over to Kyle, and Kyle is going to um, show us some of the incredible resources available through the Neighbours Day website and just talk a little bit about Neighbours Day as a as an overarching community. Great. Um, if you wouldn't mind, could you share, let me share my screen, if you know how I to do that. It is, I think. There you go. There you go. Oh, there we go. Which one there do you I go. I think it's this one. I believe, uh, yes, great. There we go. Great, so here is the glorious Neighbours Day website. Um, if you aren't registered, we really encourage you to sign up now. It's just this little form, uh, this little button here. You can sign in your form, let us know. Basically, if you're holding an event, if you're not holding an event, what kind of, uh, if you're doing seed swaps, um, and it's a really simple form I can show you here name, email, and then each time you click something new, it'll give you a little bit more information to fill in. For resources, currently one of the big ones we've got is the Northland based, which um, if you are living in the Northland area and you're looking at holding an event within the Northland area, we're currently offering um, 10 awesome ideas of a $500 uh, grant, which we're still looking at doing this is closing soon though so re i really encourage you to get yours in by end of day tomorrow maybe even end of day saturday because we're currently looking at, at the registrants uh otherwise for resources themselves we've got some really cool ones like if you can see in the middle here we've got Kyoto neighbor postcards which is a printable resource that you can use um and you can use it if you wanted to for notes for neighbors so i've got a i've got one here and they're really cute they've got this little um I don't know if you know Kat Atkinson, but Kat Atkinson has done this illustration for us. It's so cute. And on the back, it says um, Neighbours Day 2021, growing stronger together. And that's got our, our little um, link there. And um, this could be used for Notes for Neighbours. So uh, one of the great ways we're looking at it, um, activating Neighbours Day this year is to, is to encourage people to write little notes for their neighbours so that 
you can just let your neighbors know that you appreciate them, you know, or offer them maybe if they want to borrow a cup of sugar, you can put it down, uh, let them know you've got something for them, like a, a, a plant swap or a seed swap or something. Otherwise, there's other resources that are also printable on here. Like we've got these cute little posters. So if you were looking to holding an event, at, looking at holding an event and wanted to share in maybe your local supermarket, we've got our plain posters here, which you can write on either on your computer, you could write on a pen once you've printed them out. And there's a whole bunch of little invites and great things like that. We also have these flyers that we've just produced in the last two weeks. Uh, and you can print these out and put them in people's letter boxes as you're walking past to encourage them to come uh, to join the plant swap, or you can add some little details on it about an event you might be holding. Uh, and there's again, another little postcard that you can use for uh, notes for neighbors. This one, I actually have one of these as well. This one has a little poem on it by SMA Rana Piri, which says, um, you wave over the fence, your kids all curly haired are running up and down the drive in frizzy delight. Their smiles rest on my shoulders the whole day, which is so cute. Um, and there's a couple more. We've got a cute little banner that you can put on Facebook events. If you, uh, if you end up posting your own Facebook event, of course, we can do that through the Neighbors Day Facebook page if you select that you would like that when you register. Uh, and then again, there's the, um, the Northland funding. I think that's it for now. Did anyone have any questions? <clears throat> no? Yes? No? No I'm immediate sorry. burning questions there. <laughs> All right, eh? Yeah. Go ahead. You can take the right. reins if you'd like, Luke. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn you off spotlight. Mm -hmm. All right. Basically, um, how do I go back to gallery view? Just give me one moment. There we go. Um, thank you so much for that, Kyle. Um, basically, the Reader's Digest version of that is very much that Neighbours Day Aotearoa is here to help your ideas. Um, they've got some incredible resources about how to get the word out about your ideas. You've got incredible ideas of what you want to turn into events. So how can we meet in the middle here tonight and through follow-up conversations and turn your ideas into a reality? And I've got to say that a lot of you have incredible community connections. And so I'm, I'm very confident that all of you have the kind of resources to make this happen. Um, but what I want to say is, once again, in light of everything that's gone on in the last year or so, it's shown us that, I, you know, events can be anything. They can be online, they can be small scale, they can be a, as big or as small as you want. And it's all very well and good to have ambitious ideas. Believe me, I've got many an ambitious idea and sometimes I've pulled them off, but there have been perhaps other times when I've not been so successful in pulling them off. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing it right and doing it in a small way. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of us are here because we're wanting to make these community connections and get to know our neighbors and activate our communities a little bit. So um, a very basic thing to think of, or uh, well, sorry, just in reference to what we've seen, Something like using the resources from Neighbours Day Aotearoa, for example, using the Neighbours postcard, you could turn something like that into an event. It could be a, you post about it, about the resource on your, you know, maybe a community Facebook page. You just get some people to fill in these community postcards. You, um, you get people to make a poem, paint something on there, one thing that I've seen a couple of people do with these Neighbours Day postcards in the past is using them to, and it does require you printing them out so you've got physical versions of them, but getting kids involved and painting pictures on them. It's really lovely. I've seen people, um, you know, get really, really clever and, you know, write a poem or write a note to their neighbours and um, post that out. But I've also seen people get their kids to draw pictures or do a little painting on these postcards. And that's an event. Um, it doesn't need to be a big to-do where you get a whole lot of people to come along. At, at the end of the day, it's about making connection. And um, 
I've obviously, I've been furiously making notes while all of you all have been talking about the ideas that you have. Um, but I want to have um, a, basically a, after looking at those resources that we've got available, thank you, Kyle, maybe have um, a little bit of a round robin and some of the key questions that you all have are coming into this. And if we don't have the chance to answer them right now, and I will do my very best to answer them right now, I will be following up directly with all of you in terms of if I need to do some more research into answering your questions or getting you some resources and pointing you in the right direction in terms of um, making sure that your arsenal is really well equipped with resources, ideas, links, connections, so that you can make something happen. And once again, I just want to um, re-emphasize that it can be really, really intimidating to be part of a big national, you know, nationwide event where people are doing all sorts of things, but just being a part of your community, being active in your community and making something happen, even if it's as small as sending out postcards, it constitutes an event. But all of these ideas of plant swaps and community meets and getting people together, you know, bringing all your neighbors together on a street, all of these are incredibly fabulous ideas and they're very much, um, very much in line with the Kopapa of Neighbours Day. And um, I've got a lot of faith in all of you that you can make this happen. So if we could do, and it's okay if you don't have any questions right now, you can feed them into me later, but I'm really wanting to start a little bit of a discussion in terms of where you feel like, A, your knowledge maybe is, um, not as robust in the area of making something happen in terms of an event or what sort of assistance you would like from Neighbours Day to actually turn your event into a reality. Um, bearing in mind that next week we're going to talk and touch on um, ideas about marketing and promoting and getting the word out. So today we're really wanting to talk about the nitty gritty of actually making it happen, the who, what, where, when, why. So would anybody like to volunteer to start? Anybody got a burning question? Yeah, yeah you go ahead, CB. So um, I guess one of the things I'm kind of thinking about is given we are um, wanting to get the Forest Hill Community Garden off the ground and we're so, so close, um, I see the kind of dovetailing of... of our thing and Neighbours Day being a really great kind of synergy there. Um, but I'm in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, um, how can I do it in a way that is um, uh, promoting Forest Hill Community Garden um, with the support of Neighbours Day as opposed to this is a Neighbours Day event because Forest Hill Community Garden isn't actually up and running yet. We've got yeah. a website, we've got an Instagram, um, we've got a little um, seedling stand out the front of our house, yeah. which we're using to promote it, which is pretty cool. So we've got kind of a, a presence, shall I say, um, but trying to work out how to partner with Neighbours Day um, in a way that's going to boost our profile, if you know what I mean. And I hope that yeah. doesn't sound like I'm, um, uh, yeah, trying to, I was just going to see if I could hold up a little, um, a little picture of our stand so you guys can kind of get a feel for what I'm actually talking about. I don't know if this is going to be way too, oh, where's the camera on this thing? So we've just got a little. Um, Lovely. That's oh, it's cute. Cool. Yeah, it's really great. It's very cute. It looks very so Instagram worthy. Yeah, indeed. Thank you. Um, so we put seedlings out on it. We put um, we have neighbors dropping off surplus produce, and it's been really, really lovely and active over since we we started in last lockdown actually. And so the stand itself has been a really cool um, kind of hub for the community while we wait for the actual garden itself to get going. So Jess, I was going to say. Um, the stand's totally awesome. I'd, I'd really encourage you to, to crack on with that. Um, so yeah, that's my question, is how do I um, utilize Neighbours Day um, to promote what we've, what we've already got going, if you know what I mean? 
fabulous. Um, I completely know what you mean. Um, and I've got a lot of experience in terms of um, working with uh, one organization, partnering with another. And oh. I want to say that it's definitely not about one superseding the other, but yeah. it's about perhaps Neighbours Day being a nationwide platform that elevates all of these incredible community projects yeah. to a spotlight. So oh. in no way, shape or form is it Neighbours Day wanting to take your event and put their stamp on it. Mm. It's Neighbours Day lifting you up and helping awesome. people shine a spotlight on it. And there are some slightly more logistical things that come to mind, but I will send you a separate email concerning that. But um, it's uh, for all of you out there, whether you're coming from it's just you as a member of your community or you've got an established platform already that um, or organization, be it, uh, you know, a community group or a garden or, a, um, you know, an art collective, what, whatever it is, it's about those two working together so that the work that, for example, the Forest Hill Community Garden is doing can be spotlighted and elevated by Neighbours Day, not taken over by Neighbours Day, because Neighbours Day doesn't want to take anything over. It's just about making sure that these community connections are given a really good, you know, time in the limelight and awesome. spotlight from, uh, you know, from a local perspective for your community, but also from a nationwide perspective. Um, People are going to see these ideas, they're going to see these events, and they're going to see the engagement that your community has already had in something like um, a plant swap and a produce swap and having a shelf outside your house. And they're going to get really excited about perhaps doing that if they're a member of that community or replicating that within their own communities. Um, Mm -hmm. And I will, uh, over the next, uh, hopefully tomorrow, but maybe Saturday morning, we'll send you a couple of, like a little couple of things of how Neighbours Day can help just spotlight your platform and work together through your existing channels like your website and your Facebook and your Instagram and that kind of thing to make sure that it's uh, an event that's part of Neighbours Day Aotearoa 2021, but it's very, very clear that this is a Forest Hill Community Garden event mm-hmm. and the platform that you're celebrating under or the umbrella that you're, we're all sitting under is Neighbours Day Aotearoa. And mm. um, to give you guys a little bit more context, um, I've worked not just with um, the Pride Festival with Kyle, but things like the Auckland Fringe Festival and other festivals where we have a lot of artists and collaborators and event organisers who do this off their own back, off their own blood, sweat and tears. And they're using this collective platform as a way to channel um, engagement, to get people to click through to get people to learn more and to get as a way to share their stories on a wider platform. So there's definitely ways that we can work together with Neighbours Day Aotearoa and Forest Hill Community Garden, for example, so that everyone can benefit. And most importantly, you guys are going to feel that you come out of it with a really good little promo and spotlight for Forest Hill Community Gardens. It's cool. Oh, it's I love, I, lo- I just feel like the synergy is so great because, I mean, the whole point of the community garden, the whatever we produce is just kind of cherry on the top. The whole, like, co-papa is connecting people. And so yeah. to kind of go, hey, look yeah. at this national event that's trying to do the same thing that we're trying to do. There's lots of other people trying to do it. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's it absolutely rad. is. That's fabulous. Thank you, Phoebe. And would anybody like to volunteer to go next or should I pick someone? Can I respond? Sorry. Of course, Kat, oh, please. Hey, um, Phoebe, my darling, my brain never stops and its ideas just always bounce around. Um, when you were talking about that, my idea was thinking, okay, you've got a social media platform, why not use that? So if you put the postcard, uh, Neighbours Day postcards on your um, around your little stall so mm-hmm. people could take one and fill it in and maybe put a cork board up or somewhere where they could post it on or do something like that or post it into people's letterboxes you know take one fill it in and encourage yeah. them to do that and you could almost run a promotion where you could do that and then um, they could take a pic of poking it in the letterbox or of the note and tag um, NDA in it Neighbours Day Aotearoa into it and maybe go into um, a small prize 
or something to encourage them to do that tag a mate so it'll help grow your page it'll help grow neighbors day because it's been shared out amongst all of the networks so that was kind of the the thing that popped into my head for you so mm. just, oh good yeah. idea yeah and take even just the response to that response is if you're doing something like that the call to action or the drive could be that you know um, all of these people who are putting the maybe the postcards on social media or doing that kind of thing, they'll be part of the friends of the Forest Hill Garden and yeah. community garden. And, you know, because they've expressed their interest and they've participated in this event and made that connection, they're going to be on the list to get a notification or a message when the garden's open. And so they're going to be welcome to come and, I don't know, you know, plant some of the first seedlings or, yeah. you know, just, toast to the success or mm. you know be there when you guys are harvesting your first round of you know batch of silver bead or rhubarb <laughs> or you know trying to think of uh, the the winter um the crop Good. yeah it's Good. definitely not going to be tomatoes because they're all coming right, right now yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. that's fabulous thank you so much for that phoebe and Kath. um mm. what about you jess have you got any I'm questions right. ideas Ticking over now, I'm like going crazy. I love it. <laughs> Give us an insight into how your brain's doing. <laughs> well, that's my problem though. I end up not knowing which one idea to just focus <laughs> on and run with. <laughs> um, I guess um, while you guys were talking, um, so in Ashburton, um, so Methven and Ashburton, it's, you know, it's Ashburton district. Um, so um, today I did have a conversation. We are with volunteering Mid and South Canterbury and Newcomers Network um, and um, another um, organisation called Eco Educate. And we are actually collaborating on a calendar of neighbourly events throughout that period of time from the 20th to the 30th, which is going to be awesome. And so whatever I do with the Trots Community Gardens will be on that calendar and whatever I do with Wellbeing Opera will be on that calendar. Um, so I'm thinking though more with Wellbeing Opera, one of my challenges is because we're such a rural area um, and so it's Methven but it's all the surrounding villages as well. That's the area that I am the community connector for. And one of the challenges that I always have is really reaching out to those communities that are in those real small rural villages. And it would be really awesome if I could come up with a way of getting them to connect on a neighborly level for this. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm, I'm, you mentioned like a street party and I'm like, I don't know whether it's maybe having some kind of like little barbecue and I don't know I don't know I need to sit down and realize no I think you've got a fabulous idea there and sometimes when um you don't know your neighbors or something as simple as breaking bread together having food and drink creates those neighborly connections so maybe some places it's appropriate to have a street party and some people might in a more rural area maybe it's a paddock party or you know take over the barn or something like that and just putting out the invite to people and saying please come bring a plate bring a bottle you know let us know your favorite music and let's have a lovely time together and just it's not about um you know the boring day-to-day -day, but it's about getting to know the people who are your neighbors even if they're you know x amount of paddocks away from you or x amount of numbers down the rural drive from you yeah um, and obviously a consideration with rural communities is the time to travel and the distance to travel. But um, if you're, it's much better to do one event and do it really, really well. And for example, maybe it's like, we're gonna have um, a paddock party or a barn party and bring a plate, bring a bottle, bring an instrument if you can play music and just get to know everyone. You get to know their names, you get to know what they're about a little bit, you get to share a meal together. And you get to start those connections and they're very much just like seedlings you know they're going to grow if we give them a little bit of love and a little bit of food and drink and a little bit of sunlight um yeah no i completely hear you i've got um family who live down in the methven area as well and they're like hey, so i'm gonna see if i can hook them in um with your network um oh, but um, a awesome. big thing for them is 
trying to build those community connections where um, when you live in relative isolation compared to in an urban area. So um, a barbecue is totally appropriate in rural New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Because one another challenge that we have is we've got quite a large um, rural migrant community. So there's a lot of um, migrants who work on the dairy farms. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they do have isolation issues because well, you know, they've either been in the country for a very short time, English isn't their first language, they're living, you know, out in dairy farms, so they're, by geography, they're quite, or, you know, by location, they're isolated, and it would be amazing to be able to bring people together so that they can get to know more people. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm thinking now that maybe that's my direction with this, with Wellbeing of Pukki, is to do a rural community. Activity. That makes sense. <laughs> That yeah. sounds fabulous, yeah. And even if um, English may be not may not be their first language, but some of the shared languages that we have is, you know, music, food, drink, dance, you yeah. know, socializing. Yeah. So there's so many ways to break down those barriers, and that that's really exciting. Thank you for that, Jess. Oh. And how about you, Monica? Have you got any ideas, questions, anything you'd like to respond with after that little corridor? Yeah, I've been thinking about um, multilingual resources. So the notes yep. from neighbours. Um, so one of the communities that I want to be working a lot more closely with, they've got really high numbers of um, Chinese residents. Um, and we know this because, you know, we see people walking, you know, in the evenings and stuff. But um, when we've had like Halloween and things, you know, then we've had parents bring their kids through. But um, if it's just a general kind of event, it's harder to get the word out or for people to turn up. And the notes for neighbours thing, I think, would be great. But I'm wondering if there is um, any kind of capacity to, yeah, translate, have stuff, you know, written in um, Mandarin or, yeah, mm -hmm. different scripts. That That's a really, handy. really good point. Yeah, yeah, that would be fabulous. And it's definitely something that I'll look at following up immediately mm. because I've got to say that um, it, it's something that affects everyone in New Zealand. Um, we've got migrant communities everywhere. I mean, to be fair, we're all pretty much migrant communities here unless we're Tangana Whenua. Um, we just all happen to speak English, which is very convenient, but not everyone is as well versed in English as us. So anything we can do to just help break down those boundaries. And if anyone else has suggestions along those lines or if these ways that we can um, perhaps diversify, make sure that the resource speaking to everyone and make sure that you all have the tools you need to feel like you can speak to all of your community, you just let us know, even if it's just flicking me a message or sending me an email, or what have you. We'll do our best to make that happen because I really told Chocolate what you said there, Monica, and it's really important to just make that connection. Even if you don't have the shared vocabulary um, or the shared language, having just a fundamental human connection with, your, with somebody else in your community just makes you feel immediately much more a part of that community. And so I'd really love to see how we can work with you and also take your suggestions to make sure that all of the ideas that you are feeding in, which are incredibly valid, actually, we can make that happen. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no, pleasure. Did you have anything else you'd like to add immediately or? Um, uh, just one more thing, probably in terms of hosting um, online, you know, like putting an event on Facebook or whatever and sharing it in a Facebook group. Um, yeah, just, you know, the process for putting branding, you know, Neighbours Day branding and stuff on that. Fabulous, Using, yeah. Yeah. Rules yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit more about all the marketing side of it next week, which is, okay, it sounds cool. like, it sounds like as soon as you say, you know, marketing and promotion, it sounds like a very hoity hoity high pollution thing. And I mean, I want to talk, I'm talking to you from a publicity office in Auckland, but um, very much Facebook, Instagram, those grassroots networks, 
doesn't matter whether you're doing a, something as simple as a community barbecue or you're doing a big 2,000 seat theater event, Facebook and social media, that's the way to go. It's the way that people make connections and it's the way that we talk to one another when we're not talking face to face. Um, so we will provide you with um, a number of resources ahead of next week and also talk more to those questions next week. But um, oh, I want to assure yeah. So, you have something yes, related to yeah. that, um, again, yeah. this is very, I'm um, very much thinking of the groups that um, we find it a lot more challenging to connect with who um, are non-English speaking. So I'm aware that in one of our communities, there's um, a really active WeChat group of the Chinese yeah. residents. So unless you've got an in, you know, so how do we promote um, stuff so that can be cross transferable yeah. and it's not just on Facebook. Yeah. And apparently the Indian residents there have got like a WhatsApp group that they, they're quite active on talking to themselves, you know, um, which is great. Um, but again, yeah, when we are thinking marketing and promotion and social media, if we can build that into the conversation as well so that it's not Lovely. just our mainstream Facebook or yep. Insta that'd be really really helpful if there's any tips I really hear you there yeah that. and so we'll look at how you guys can do that like specifically but also making sure you've got information that you can pass on if you've got members of those communities who've indicated that they're interested how they can just you know, maybe take a quick look on the website and be like, oh, no, that's all I need. I can download the picture and pop my own information in there and share it to my WeChat group or share it to my WhatsApp group. Um, I really hear you there. So thank you for bringing that up. That's a very, very good point. Yeah. Thank you. And what about you, Nani? Do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, I just got a question that kind of thought Please. of. Um, QR code. Will we need for our events to have a QR code? Yeah, you'll need to have a QR code or some kind of um, physical uh, log. Uh, so it's like a, um, gosh, a contact tracing log. Um, mm -hmm. It's really, really easy to do that. And I'm going to send out in a separate email a little bit of information. And I'm going to keep try to keep it as simple as possible. But basically, it's like a one, two, three. What do we need to do to make sure that we're COVID compliant? And it's very, very mm -hmm. simple. It's making sure you've got a QR code. And I did it the other week. I made it for the office when we got back into the office this year. It's super duper easy. I'll send you out a template version of a contact tracing log so um, that you've got that there. And then it's just about making sure that you're encouraging people to not come if they're feeling unwell and to make sure to maintain hygiene. But um, thank you so much for bringing that up, Nani. It's mm. definitely on the list. I just didn't want to sort of bog down this conversation <laughs> with COVID, especially when we're in Auckland that just come out of level three. But it's a really, really important thing to think about. Mm. And another thing to think about is that if you guys have um, people who are super concerned about that, online events, a way to connect online in a COVID safe way, if you've got people who are either in isolation or maybe feeling like they're immunocompromised or just maybe a little bit apprehensive about leaving the house you can do all sorts of things over zoom and i'll send through or like share some separate resources about all the ideas i have about online events um separately but so the quick the short answer is yes you will and but mm -hmm. expect more information from me where you can just follow the bullet points and i'll make it as easy as possible and then if you have any other questions just come straight back to me because i'm really really happy to answer them Oh, that'd be great. And I was also thinking of, um, I was like a contact list that we can share yeah. with one another. Yeah. Just Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, a contact list for us as um, people behind the scenes in Neighbours Day or a contact list in terms of contact tracing? No, I was thinking a contact list for the people attending your event and if they want to yeah. share it, you know, with the yeah. neighbours. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll definitely, we'll talk about that a little bit more next week and I'll send through stuff, but there's definitely ways to put something out into the world, be it on Facebook or Instagram or WeChat or WhatsApp and let it just do the thing and have a domino or butterfly effect where you put it out and somebody shares or somebody comments, somebody sends it to one another. Um, and I mean, you'd be surprised how effective these things are, but 
when you get people excited about an event because they feel like it's for them, be that a barbecue in rural Methven or a street party in South Auckland or a plant swap in Forest Hill, people do get really, really excited about it and they'll tag their friends, they'll share it with their friends and they'll, um, the more excited you are and, or, and the more, because you're all genuinely incredibly excited and you've got great ideas, we just need to find the best way to, to put that out into the world. Um, mm. And so we'll talk more about the sort of mm. nitty gritty details of marketing and promo next week. But these questions and these, um, these elements of feedback are absolutely fantastic. And um, I think, Nani, that there's going to be, um, you'd be surprised at how excited people get, especially after the year we've had about having a reason to come together and celebrate and enjoy being in the company of our own community. Nice. Thanks for that, Luke. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you for that feedback. And um, Kath, I know that you responded to what Phoebe said, but did you have any um, immediate burning um, questions about how you can empower people to make things happen in your community or what you'd like from us as, um, you know, project support? I think, I mean, I'm just waiting on some resources, but... To, to arrive so that I can hand them out and put up posters yep. at supermarkets and libraries and and start to get the word out there and drop a few in litter boxes and give some for people to give away. Um, like, you know what, I think that I like the idea, I don't know if you've actually signed on for this, but it came down to the event when you were signing up. What's, when will you host your event and what will your event mean, um, you know, be about? And I kind of wondered if the word event is sometimes off-putting yeah. because yeah. I know that I hesitated and I thought, oh gosh, an event sounds, I mean, we're so used to big events now that are being hosted that when you see that word, it feels like it should be bigger than what it is. Yeah. So I kind of like the catchphrase, like a, a neighbor's moment, you know, just a moment with your neighbor is all it takes. You know, we don't have to have an event. It can just be simply leaning over the fence and taking a moment to yeah. have that connection um, you know, I like, we're looking at, um, we're looking at getting a coffee cart and going into, um, this is a big deal and, you know, not what everyone's going to be doing, but at a big level, it's like get a coffee cart, go into a street, and then we're going to hand out free coffees. But, you know, I did the same thing in a community-based um, role that I did, and we went to a school and we sat outside the school and we just had thermoses of hot water and had those sachets of coffee and you know we just handed out coffees to the mums that were going into the school and I'm thinking things like a lemonade stand you know just for the kids yep. to hand out lemonade to people walking past or you know all those sorts of things are ways of connecting back into our communities and yeah so that for me was the word event I think when you signed up for it that kind of I struggled yep. with that a little bit um, I know that might be a bit off-porting for some people, perhaps. Um, yeah. But yeah, I thought the QR code, good point. Hadn't thought about that for the, you know, if you do have an event. So yeah, yeah. let's buy on that one. Um, but yeah, I think just the resources, getting a hold of those resources are quite useful. Um, yeah. Yeah, to be able to get them out into the community and get the word out there and just, you know, share it on your page. You know, we've all got friends. Share it on your Facebook page. Because the more we share, the more we care, you know? It's kind of gets the word out there, really, doesn't it? And I love snap that. The pic, more we share, the more pic. we care. Yeah. Mm. Snap a picture, guys. You know, um, that's kind of what we do. Obviously, we're storytellers, so we're all about photography and video and, and things like that. So, you know, those moments are all are all stories and we're all storytellers so we need to capture them and we have this great big huge social platform to share them on and um you know no matter how small your moment is take a break and send it you know take nda in it keep going you know and it keeps the love alive really eh? yeah i really have to talk about mm -hmm. what you said there the word event can seem yeah. really overwhelming and feel like you have to hire out some kind of grand event center send out the invites, RSVP, tickets, food, catering. Yeah, yeah. That stuff's exhausting. I've done yeah. that stuff. And yeah. it's, sometimes they're great, but sometimes the best event is just a moment. Sometimes the best, the thing you look forward to is having a cup of tea with your friend or a glass of wine right. with your friend at the end of the week. 
And um, I'll send through some examples from festivals I've worked at, are some really small scale community focused events where it's something as simple as doing a, like something like a lemonade stand or a plant swap. Oh, it's a car boat thing, it's a garage sale. It's uh, um, one thing I've been particularly inspired by um, as my cousin introduced me to this community Facebook group, which was really focused on low waste and no waste. And mm -hmm. so it's like a, almost like a little bit of a community library if somebody's some, got something they're wanting to get rid of rather than just chucking it away, if it's still useful, making those connections so you can put it rehome something or mm -hmm. you know, hosting a board game night or hosting a barbecue or something like that. I mean, if people have the resources to do some kind of fabulous grand scale event, that's awesome. But at the end of the day, we're trying to create some magic moments here yeah. and magic neighbors moments and yeah. that can be as simple as giving somebody a cup of instant coffee outside yeah. of school gate and making that human connection and I think it's something that we're all really really starved for after the year that we've had and after the scare that we've had over the last week or so mm -hmm. we've really I least myself I mean I'm speaking from Auckland I had to spend three days home alone with my cat going a little bit crazy <laughs> uh just you know, being able to greet the bus driver in the morning and say hello to the people in the office building next door and go and get my lunch and just making that connection is really soul fueling. Yeah. And so I want you all to know that all of your ideas are incredible and that they're going to create some incredibly magic community moments. And that I am here, like we've got the Neighbors Day resources and yes, I will follow up and making those resources more multilingual so that we have a way to connect with our migrant communities. And if anybody else has any other feedback and how we can um, change up, diversify or make those resources better to serve your community, please, I wanna hear it. But also um, I'll make sure that you've all got my, I think you've all got an email from me that has my number in it. So please feel free to send me an email, send me a message on Facebook or just um, send me a text. And I am very happy. I have, you know, this bit of an encyclopedia of events in here. I'm very happy to bounce ideas off and answer questions for any of you. This, um, my expertise, my expertise is not limited to the Zoom. You've all got my contact information and I'm available for all of you to contact. I'm closer to some of you because I'm based in central Auckland. Um, but I am in the same time zone as all of you, and I would love to help all of you m help you know, make your events, your ideas into an event or into a magical neighbor's moment. And mm -hmm. all I'd have to say is basically the Reader's Digest version of that is don't be intimidated by the word event. It's hard for me to say that. Don't be intimidated by that. But um, it's, you know, it's such a, it's just a buzzword. It's what mm -hmm. is your idea for making a connection happen? And if that is sharing a drink, breaking bread, if that is popping a postcard in somebody's letterbox, if that is leaving the postcards available, if that's making sure you have a little street party to get your neighbors to know one another, these are all incredible things and they're incredible stories to tell. I really need to um, applaud you, Kath, for bringing up that storytelling approach because we're all storytellers yeah. and we're all just trying to make connections with other people to share our stories and to build stories together. And hopefully um, with a little bit of help from Neighbors Day Aotearoa, we can turn your events into, or your ideas into an actual community reality where you have some of those magical moments where you can start to share stories and also um, start stories with your neighbors and with your community. Right. Um, I'm very aware that we're getting close to 8.30. I am free for the next wee while if anybody has any additional questions. Um, and I just want to open up the floor or the Zoom for anyone to have any additional comments, questions, queries, concerns, anything like that. Is there anything that anybody would like to add? Mm. That's fabulous. I just want to say thank you all for participating in that. I encourage you to have a good scroll through the Neighbours Day Aotearoa um, website and let us know if you see there's any gaps, if there's things we could be doing better, if there's things that we could make um, more accessible, please just let us know. But also I'm going to be in touch with all of you um, after this in the next day or so about, um, I've been seriously taking a lot of notes during this meeting. So um, I love all of your ideas and I really would love to stay in touch with all of you in terms of 
making sure you've got everything you, that you need to turn your idea into a magical Neighbours moment to be part of um, Neighbours Day 2021. Um, thanks everyone for being part of this. I really appreciate you volunteering an hour of your time on a Thursday night for this. I hope to see you all again next Thursday when we talk a little bit more about getting the word out, but also um, you can expect to hear from me in the coming days. Um, so can we just have a little round of paki paki for everyone doing mm -hmm. this on a Thursday night? I really appreciate all of you and I feel very, very fueled and enthused by all your ideas. And please, I know what it's like. The moment that you close the Zoom, you're probably going to have a million ideas and a million questions. So please just really feel free to get in touch with me about them because I'm here to help and I really want to help make these ideas into a reality. Um, so thanks everyone for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. everyone. Have a lovely night. Look Thank after you. yourselves and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Bye.